So I recently was introduced to OpenAI's ChatGPT3 and it is literally mind-blowing. I saw so many examples online of people using it to get ideas for marketing copy, ideas for interior design, business plans, creating lyrics for a movie plot or screenwriting, or even to fix code. It's even capable of critiquing itself as seen here. But with all of that in mind, it got me to thinking, how would a student use this? And what would this mean for the future of education as well as other industries? So as a content creator and journalist, I just had to share the news about this and do a deep dive into how this is going to change almost everything. Let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome to my YouTube channel, ESP Daniela, where I talk about everything and anything related to education, scholarships, professional development, and tech. Now feel free to let me know in the comments what other new or lesser known technology I should talk about here as it relates to education. Anywho, so for hours I have been quite literally obsessed with testing out ChatGPT3 to see just how powerful it actually is. To give you guys an example right off the bat, I asked the AI to write a paper about socialism versus capitalism and use in-text citations dating between 2018 and 2020 and also to end off with a bibliography and APA style. And as you can see, it immediately wrote it in seconds. Feel free to pause and read if you think it is a well-written paper. I even prompted it to write a personal-based essay with the scenario of if I were a first-generation college student from an immigrant family writing a college admissions essay. Then I also prompted it for a scholarship essay for someone who grew up in a low-income, single-parent household with three siblings that they had to take care of. And here's part of how that essay went. Additionally, I asked it to write a response to common scholarship essay prompts as seen here, here, and here. Now, of course, there are other technologies that do the same with writing essays immediately, so this isn't something that is totally new. The main difference as it stands currently with recording this video is that ChatGPT3 is free for now since it is in its research phase, whereas other platforms may limit you to only like 200 words for free, but then after that you will face a paywall. Additionally, in terms of essays, it has the capability to review them and give feedback. The AI responded that it can provide suggestions for improving the structure and organization of your essay and so forth. Now, as for some other things I asked for, I wrote, what are the best online colleges to get an MBA that also offer a lot of financial aid? From there, it gave me a list of five schools that meet those requirements. And honestly, I might just seriously look into that because I'm contemplating transferring from doing a PR to an MBA for grad school. And so after seeing this, I got really curious. What if I instead typed in the same question for Google this time? Can you guess what popped up? Mainly ads. Now this isn't to say that links mentioning ads can't be helpful, but personally, if I am looking for something online, the first option should instead be things that best fit my search result. So Google might just have some really huge competition, just saying. And also I made another video comparing Google versus ChatGPT3, so make sure to check that out. I then asked the AI for fully funded MBA programs, whether or not they were online, and it gave me an entirely different list of schools to consider enrolling in. I even asked it, how can I raise money for college via a GoFundMe? And it gave me a fairly general response organized by listed points. And on that note, if you are interested in a more in-depth tutorial to this on how to raise money for your college education, I will be hosting a free webinar and of course it will be recording as well. So make sure to sign up for that and I will link that down below in the description box. But anywho, I also learned that with ChatGPT3, you can use the AI to list external scholarships specific to your background, such as local opportunities or relating to your study concentration. And on top of all of that, you can even generate a spreadsheet with deadlines when you ask it to. I saw an even stronger example of this on Twitter, where after prompting a chain of several questions to the AI, they were able to get this, showing countries with their population, language, coordinates, crime rates, and even COVID deaths. Crazy, right? Now, after learning all this, I kind of just went crazy with it. So I opened up the scholarship advising discord I have, which you should definitely join. Students are winning scholarships all the time and using my strategies. They got me 30 scholarships. But anywho, I prompted the AI to find various scholarships for various demographics of students, such as STEM, Asian, graduate students, medical, visual arts, you name it. And then from there, posted the results on the chat's separate channels. And afterwards, I asked the students in the chat if they found it to be helpful, and they answered with yes, without even knowing that that was AI-generated responses. 
I also want to list out some keywords you can tell ChatGPT3 to optimize it even more. So for example, quantify. Be specific with how many results you want it to populate. See, by default, when I was testing it out, it typically would only populate about five results with my prompt. So if you want like 10, 20, or even 50, make sure to mention that. Also, there's continue or go on to the end. So let's say that you are wanting a list of 10 scholarships, but the AI have the ones it suggests you are ineligible for, so you need a longer list than that. So then you would tell the AI to continue or to be even more specific, you could say continue and add 20 more to the scholarship list. Now let's say that you want a complex subject to be explained to you easier. Well, well, you can say explain to me like a child or explain in layman's terms which means to describe a complex or technical statement using words and terms that someone not specialized in that specific field can still understand. Now as for some other ways students or anyone for that matter may use this technology includes extracting data from a text you provide such as seen here from this example. Also it can help with summarizing information whether that is from a well-known book, historical, or fairly recent events. For instance when I typed in to summarize Watergate this popped up or for a more recent event I asked to summarize the January 6th insurrection in 2020 and this popped up. And as I mentioned earlier with the keyword of explain in layman's terms, if you are trying to learn a complicated concept, you can ask for the language to be simplified. Or if instead, if you want it to be in a particular style, such as if you are someone who needs it to be written to you like you were a child, or perhaps even in a catchy way to remember a concept, or even if you need humor to retain information about a boring topic. As an example of this in action would be how this user prompted the AI to simplify the pasted in text by a historian in a way that a college student could understand. And as for humor, you could say something like, explain this concept as if you were Peter Griffin from Family Guy. Also for more ways to retain information faster as a student, I have a separate video here on my YouTube channel dedicated just for that. So make sure to check it out. Overall, using this technology for this specific purpose can especially be helpful if you have like a teacher who you can't necessarily learn from. See, everyone has their own learning style and this can make knowledge and retention much more accessible. I also want to share some random things I was able to make using ChatGPT3. So I asked it to make a poem in German than a song that could possibly go viral on social media, to which I responded with that the first version it sent me sucked, so it had to try again. And I even asked it to find an image of a cat, but of course, since it is a text-based AI, that wasn't possible, but the workaround for this was to create an image using text, and as a result, it gave me this image. Then I asked it to create a human image in text, to which it showed me something that honestly just looked like this imaginary character from a childhood show I loved. <laughs> And so from there, I responded with, that's ugly, so please try again. This time around, it created a house, and then again, it made a bottle, all while thinking these were human. So I just had for it to stop because it was low-key embarrassing itself, but A for effort, right? I also asked about topics relating to race and diversity, and luckily the AI was trained enough to understand that asking that was not the same as stating something discriminatory, unlike how some other tech I've used can't seem to know the difference. So guys, get creative and see what the AI can generate for you, and feel free to let me know in the comments what it comes up with. Now let's talk about the ethics of all this in the context of school and education. Obviously, there are already resources online and via apps on your phone that can automatically solve math equations, generate responses to discussion board questions, and translate foreign language homework. So ChatGPT3 is by far not the first or only capable of these functions, and schools, for the most part, do not possess the technology needed to be able to detect 100% of the time when such AI technology is being used. Although some do try their best, such as Turnitin, and I can only imagine how more advanced they will be in the coming years because of this rapidly evolving technology. So if you decide to use such technology for such purposes, that's up to you. I am by no means encouraging it because I still believe that it is very very, very important to understand how to solve math problems on your own and how to effectively write on your own and so forth but rather I encourage you to use this as an extension of yourself as a resource for general research such as what I showed earlier with this video with scholarships and colleges and so forth as well as for an ideal framework if you are feeling stuck and need some inspiration such as if you have writer's block 
Or let's say that English isn't your first language and you struggle with writing in it. In that case, AI writing could possibly help you significantly with bridging that gap. Also tying back into writing, these examples I showed earlier with AI generated responses, they may very well get you a passing grade or even an A for that particular assignment. That is, if it passes the plagiarism test. And as you can see here, here are two mixed results according to those who tested it out using the program of where they were seeing anywhere from 0% plagiarism detection to up to 85%. And as for college admissions or scholarship essays, AI is more than likely not going to be enough to give you an edge with your application. And how would I know this? Well, for one, I have experience with winning 30 scholarships and helping students win millions. And if I were to see an essay that only wrote what was generated from AI examples seen earlier, it would not have been selected. Now, don't get me wrong, the writing was good, but it wasn't memorable. And so in both cases, for scholarships or college admissions essays, they require a personal touch. And so if you are trying to get into a really competitive school with low acceptance rates or get a scholarship that thousands and thousands of people compete for, depending solely on AI, likely is not going to be enough. You have to tweak it here and there so that it truly fits your tone, perspective, and your experience. And with that in mind, feel free to use my free template on how to effectively write your essay for scholarships and college admissions. I'll link that down in the description box. I also want to cover how exactly will AI change education as we know it. Feel free to drop comments down below with your own thoughts. However, first I want to share this tweet I saw which had some really great predictions so Daniel Pink tweeted that there may be more flipped classrooms such as video lectures, as homework and hands-on projects and classes, fewer take-home exams, as well as oral exams. These are all predictions that I too have. And to add on to that, I personally think that there will be even more of an emphasis on in-person learning rather than virtual classes. And if assignments are to be submitted online, such as an essay, educators may start checking the history of the writing. By this, I mean, let's say you submit an essay via a Google document. Well, with the document's history, you can see hour by hour the changes that were made. So if the essay's history shows that it was only written in 10 seconds, for a 10 page paper, then obviously something is going on right there. Or perhaps these writing softwares will have to add a replay feature where it can see in recorded time second by second you typing in words letter by letter, which of course would make it even more obvious if you just paste in an AI generated essay. So in a way, it sounds as if the more language based AI becomes accessible and the more the education system finds ways to combat against it, so to say, the more it may force students to think critically for themselves rather than being so dependent on technology in order to be academically successful. I also want to point out this from Scott Arison, who is a computer scientist who recently joined OpenAI to work on the AI safety there. On his blog post posted November 28, 2022, he stated that his main project at OpenAI is to cryptographically watermark GPT outputs for long text. They want for it to be an otherwise unnoticeable secret signal in his choices of words, which can be used to prove later that yes, this came from GPT and not a human, and of course this can be helpful for preventing academic plagiarism. Now of course, there are some restrictions with with this technology. As seen from the New York Times, unlike Google, ChatGPT doesn't crawl the web for information on current events, and its knowledge is restricted to things it learned before 2021, making some of its answers feel stale. However, one limitation I honestly respect a lot is that there are also plenty of things ChatGPT won't do. As a matter of principle, OpenAI has programmed the bot to refuse inappropriate requests, such as things that are discriminatory or illegal to do. But of course, there have been some people who have found their way around this. However, However, since ChatGPT3 is open to the public now for testing, this can help train the interface to know how to detect in the future when users are trying to bypass their code of ethics. There are also some issues I have run into with using ChatGPT3. For instance, I may type in something and then I'll get an error message, so I'll have to try again, but then that doesn't even work, so I'll have to reload the page all over again. But honestly, I think this is mainly happening because so many people are using the software all at the same time, after all. It went super viral online on social media, so I imagine that in the future, this won't be an ongoing issue that we'll be running into. Also, the AI can't really produce direct URL links to click on or even if you try to request for them, but there are exceptions to this. So there were a few times when I was testing it out, it showed direct links that I could click on, and then I asked the AI why that was, and it responded by clarifying that that was my browser enabling that feature, not the AI itself. And as of right now, the AI is only officially available via 
via its website. However, I have seen on Twitter people getting really creative and making extensions to integrate it into their code or even a Siri shortcut that adds ChatGPT results to every response. And finally, not a limitation, but rather a great feature about this is that it builds on follow-up questions unlike most other AI chat box that are stateless, meaning that they treat every new request as a blank state and aren't programmed to remember or learn from previous conversations. This key distinction is what makes it much more advanced than others before it. So to close out this video i just want you guys to know that there's a rumor going around that chat gpt4 will come out sometime in 2023 as i'm recording right now it is december 2022 and i'm using chat gpt 3.5 i believe so considering how advanced this one that we have right now already is we are definitely not ready for how this may just disrupt almost every single industry so what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what your predictions are and give this video a thumbs up. Also feel free to check my bio description for student resources relating to scholarships and overall college or high school success. And make sure to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. Bye.